let's talk about the Schmeck who stole Christmas. So it was just Christmas Eve and a father of four named Jared Schmeck um, decided to do what his family does every single year, which is call into what's known as the NORAD Santa Tracker, which tracks Santa's sleigh movement across the globe, which is very real and don't ever question that. Uh, except for this time, uh, the people who were on the other line answering those calls from kids and their families uh, were the president and the first lady, uh, President Joe Biden and Jill Biden. And Jared Schmeck had that opportunity, spoke to the president, told him all the things that his family wanted for Christmas and then ended with this. Take a listen. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you have a wonderful hey, Christmas. Well. Yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas as well. Oh, Merry Christmas you. and let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. Yes, uh, the wackiest burn that the conservative movement has come up with that basically is code, special secret code for F Biden. Uh, and so you see Joe Biden's initial reaction is, Haha, let's go, Brandon, as if he didn't hear him. He doesn't know what it means. And then Jill Biden just kind of the color drops from her face. but. Nina, your first reaction to this moment and also President Biden's response to being told to F himself. I mean, it definitely was in poor taste. It wasn't even necessary, whether he agrees with the president's politics or not. They weren't in a heated debate over policy issues, right? It was a Merry Christmas and not for him, it was for his children. So it just didn't make sense. I could see if they were in a heated political exchange, then maybe. But they were not. It was a Merry Christmas. But, you know, Francesca, more than that, I'm kind of feeling like, who cares? <laughs> I, I, I really don't give a damn about this, honestly, <laughs> if I could just be honest about this. There's so much happening in the world right now, so much suffering um, to debate over and over again this man and this full outrage about what he said to the president. Yes, was it in poor taste? Yeah. Was he having a synapse lapse at the time, or did he really mean to, to say that? You know, Sometimes people, you know, your mind is going really fast. You just think, oh, I'm just going to say this. It's, it's felt good in his mind. But when it came out of his mouth, and I know since then he's gone on with old Steve Bannon and saying that his uh, freedom of speech is being suppressed and all of this nonsense. Man, just own up to it. Either you had a snap slaps in the in the in the <laughs> midst of you know talking to the president of the United States of America, or you meant it. Just whatever it is. But ultimately. You know, the death threats the man is getting, you know, he's claiming he's getting threats and all that. That's just nonsense. And I think it's all a distraction, too. We got other things that we should be giving our time and attention to. And guess what? The president's going to be all right. He'll be all right. His, his feelings will be fine for sure. Yeah. And I agree that it is largely a distraction. It just feels kind of so depraved to be on a phone call with the president of the United States and talk about your kids wanting a Barbie and a, like a Nintendo Switch it's and true. then yeah. telling him to go F himself. It's just like, it, 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 but, but it is truly the most MAGA moment meets the most like uh, sort of old timey uh, Woody from Toy Story president we've ever had. And they sort of clashed right there. And Biden doesn't even know that he's being insulted. So there's that. I agree it's a distraction. But that being said, it's a fun distraction. And uh, allow me to indulge myself a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> initially, Schmeck, who by the way is the perfect name for who, what kind of a person he is. Schmeck said he's not a Trumper, but described himself as a quote, free thinking American and a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's why he told the president to go F himself on Christmas Eve, you know, in the spirit of Christmas. Um, he writes, quote, I understand there's a vulgar meaning to let's go Brandon, but I'm not that simple minded no matter how I feel about him. The 35 year old father said Christmas mornings, he seems like he's a cordial guy. There's no animosity or anything like that. It was merely just an innocent jest to also express my God given right to express my frustrations in a joking manner. I love him just like I love any other brother or sister. And now, as Nina alluded to, I'm being attacked for utilizing my freedom of speech, Schmeck said, adding that he's been receiving vague but threatening phone calls since a Santa tracker call. I don't know about you, Nina, but when I like love someone like a brother, I don't usually tell them to go F themselves. Although it depends. I mean, maybe we're in a, you know, a sibling spat. 
Um, but you, this having it both ways. I love Jesus Christ, and I just told the president to go f himself. I'm reminded of watching the Four Hours at the Capitol HBO documentary recently. They're on the lectern. Insurrection is on the lectern going, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm not a very religious person, but Nina, you just talked about being brought up in 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 that tradition, but in you know, um, in a Black Liberation tradition. I don't know your thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to stomach the tradition, we had to put some Black Liberation on it, uh, Francesca. I mean, we should not be surprised here. I mean, it was in the name of Jesus and uh, Christianity that the land of the Native Americans, our Indigenous uh, sisters and brothers and family and friends, was stolen. It was also in the name of Jesus, this beautiful Christianity, uh, that part of Christianity that. Uh, Black folks were enslaved and told to obey their masters, and and you you might just make it to heaven in the by and by everything is going to be all right. But for generations, we are going to enslave you and your offspring forever, and turn the United States of America into a hegemon nation. We're going to rape your women and your men at times. We're going to deprive your children, et cetera, et cetera. So, Fran, the moral of the story here is that a lot of bad things happen in the name of Christianity, and again, what this did did. did on par to the examples I just gave, <laughs> uh, really pale in comparison. I am not surprised. People use religion for all kinds of nonsense and, and evil. But same on the other side of that, religion can also be used to uplift. So when all else fails, lean on Christianity, baby. <laughs> just yeah. that's so just true. You there. could just, yeah. yes, some of the worst people have used it, yes, as you just mentioned, to justify the worst things. but. And as Nina alluded to, you know, there were, the jury was out. It was like, who was this guy? Was he just like a Joe the plumber? Just, just mad about vaccine mandates, even though he's totally vaccinated. Definitely not. Um, you know, was he someone who was just like, we're all frustrated about the supply chain, I guess. You know, like who was he? And the other day, as this saga has unfolded, we learned exactly who he is. In fact. He's a mega magger and he uh, went on Steve Bannon's podcast and take a listen to what he said. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for me, let's go Brandon is, and, I, and I've said it in other articles, I, I am a Christian man. Uh, it's for me, it's God first and foremost. I don't follow any one man blindly. Um, some of the media's run with that and said, I don't support Donald Trump. That's absolutely false. Donald Trump is my president and he should still be president right now. Uh, the election was 100% stolen. Um, so I, I just wanna make that clear. Um, I follow Donald Trump because he is my president. It's not political. I just he's still the president, and the election was stolen. I don't, but I don't follow blindly one man. But like Donald Trump is the Lord and Savior. You know, obviously next to whatever that guy's name is. I don't know. Um, Yeezy, Jesus. Anyway, the point is, is uh, <laughs> there's Schmeck in all his full Schmecky and glory. And uh, just just very much revealing. And here we have another superstar in the making, a right winger who can say, "Let's go, Brandon, to the president." Oh, and now he's going to be put on all the podcasts. I'm sure Tucker Carlson will have him on as soon as he gets back from his Bahamas vacation or wherever he's gone, or whoever he's tormenting on his time off. Um, it is ridiculous, Nina. I agree with you. This is. Such a distraction story, but it's also so indicative of the fact that there is no opposition to Biden substantially from the from the right. There isn't. They have nothing to say. It is just let's go, Brandon. But they're not talking about the things that we are talking about: canceling student debt, supporting the PRO Act, supporting voting rights, right? Ending the filibuster. It's just no, I don't like him because mandates, and I don't freedom. Like that, <laughs> there's nothing there. And he continues the interview saying this is a cancel culture. You know, it's all the buzzwords. The word cloud of conservative thought was touched in that interview. Um, anyway, any I any final parting words? I mean, he definitely made it clear it wasn't a synapse lapse. It was deliberate uh, what he did. And just own it, brother. Just own it. And I use that term loosely. Just own it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, now he's but trying to. I mean, it's the same way that it's like. If it weren't clear that Kyle Rittenhouse was absolutely a white supremacist sympathizer, um, now he is because it gives him clout and cachet. And so he's going to completely own it. So uh, look out, Fox News, you got the, the Schmeck hour. Um, 
Schmeck talk. I don't know. We're, we've got to workshop some ideas for Schmeck in the future. Um, but good riddance. I don't want to ever talk about you again. Amen. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.